Hi guys, it's Samantha. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about books, like we do every day. More, sus more, <laughs> more specifically, we are going to talk. We are going to talk about books I've hauled, books I'm unhauling, and we are going to unwrap a couple of books because I got some surprise books that I don't know what they are. <laughs> Unbox, unwrap. I'm going to call it unwrap because I've already unboxed them. Hi, hello. It's been a while. Um, summer took me by storm. I have two young kids and I have not made a video in a very long time because I have been busy solo parenting. My husband has been away at work and I promise I will get better at doing videos. But other than that, let's get into it. I think I'm going to start with unboxing these two books that I recently got because I am anxious, interested, I'm excited. So these are both from Layla Between the Lines. I will link her Instagram down below. I follow her on Instagram. She does beautiful things. Obviously she does beautiful things. So she's getting rid of some of her books. She decided to do like a cute little surprise book date thing. And she wrapped them up. I picked out a fantasy, a YA fantasy. She only has YA books, which is like kind of a downside. But you know what? I'll support another Instagrammer, you know? Um, anyways, she's got fantasy books and um, she picked down a YA contemporary book. This was my surprise book. I have no idea what genre I'm going to get and she chose contemporary. So we'll see how that goes. I don't really read YA contemporary. I'm honestly a little bit too old for them anymore. I like don't, I don't connect with the characters and you know, I got to connect with characters. Um, anyway, she put like these cute little library book cards in there to like show you what it's about and have my name written at the top. Isn't that the cutest? I'll get my face on the camera. And then she put a tarot card in there and stickers. Isn't that the sweetest thing? She actually some really cool stickers. I might, I have one that I want to add to my, uh, I think there might be something here. I have one that I want to add to my Kindle actually when this video is over. I'll show you guys. Ah, which one is it? Where is it? It's here somewhere. Oh, the tarot cards. This is the one I want to add. Ding. Can you see it? Yes. Ding. And then I might also add this one at the bottom of my Kindle. It's like a little moon phases. I read, I've been reading a lot of fantasy lately that has been like, um, moon phases have been like a really big theme. Anyways, for the fantasy one, I've got, it says, she has beautiful handwriting. <laughs> 4.09 Goodreads rating, 450 pages, fairy tales, fools, magic, and madness. And I have a feeling this is going to be the Ace of Spades book. We'll see if I'm right. I feel like the fools and magic thing really like, that's what it is. Oh, and the one I, the tarot card I got was Two of Swords. I also really like this deck. I've seen it several times in like a bookstore. It's like a Americana tattoo one. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see what it is. I like the brown paper. I wrap my books in brown paper too. So if you get any books from my Pango bookstore after this video, I wrap them like this. And twine. Oh, I love twine. Alright, let's see. Oh, Heartless. You know what's funny is I actually have not read this. But it's an old book. It's an older book by Marissa Meyer. And I've heard, I haven't heard bad things about it. This is definitely a cover I've never seen before. So that's interesting. Not a bad cover. I like the spine. Oh, it says, long before Alice fell down the rabbit hole and before the roses were painted red, the Queen of Hearts was just a girl in love for the first time. I have heard good things about this book. I just have never read it. I've never picked it up. Once again, YA fantasy. Eh. This is exciting. Maybe I should just go ahead and add it to the tbr card all right next one is a contemporary and this one is has a 4.08 goodreads rating 470 pages it's summertime bucket lists and there's a missing bestie so that sounds like some sort of thriller ya contemporary vibes let's see Since you've been gone. I don't know. I don't know about this one. I'll put it on my TBR card. Maybe one of these days I'll, I'll, I might feel like reading it. I don't know. I've never heard of it. Okay. It says, It was Sloane who yanked Emily out of her shell and made life 100% interesting. But right before what should have been the most epic summer, Sloane just disappears. And she leaves behind is, all she leaves behind is a to-do list. On it, 13 Sloane-inspired tasks that Emily would normally never try, but what if they could bring her best friend back? Apple picking at night, dance until dawn, kiss a stranger. Emily now has the unexpected summer and the help of Frank Porter to check things off Sloane's list. Who knows what she'll have, what she'll find. 
Oh, that sounds like a good summer read. So that's a good pick for like summer. Cool. That was a really good condition. That's really sweet. Okay. That is the other one. And I got my little blind date the book thing. All right, let's go over all the other books. Okay, right, now let's go over all the other books that I picked up. Um, some of these were definitely some emotional shopping that I did while my husband was gone. Surprise, surprise. No, no one is surprised by that. Um, and I'm excited. I think there's four of these. I'll, I'll go over like the uh, emotional books that I picked. These are all the ones that I found at Target. I'm taking off the stickers right now, if you can't tell. Um, these are all the ones that I found at Target while trying to decompress with my children. You know, I've become, it's not that I've become a Target mom, but it's like just down the street from our house. So it's easy to become a Target mom, you know, because they do have books there too. And the only other place that I can buy books in this town is Barnes and Nobles at full price um, or Walmart. And Walmart does not have a good selection. Tar my Target has like an okay selection of books, you know. Let me take these off. I'm going to be annoying. Maybe I'll fast forward through this. I'm taking off stickers. Hold on. I was not prepared for this. Like I said, it's been busy. My life has been busy. Oh, this one's not going to come off very well. I'm like triggering a ton of people on this video. Oh. Oh, it's okay. I take off dust covers anyways. I don't know why I'm like struggling with this. I want to show you guys the pretty covers. Okay. One, just, just, just one more. Okay, one more. Okay, that one came off really easy. All right, these are my emotional picks. <laughs> I got Love Light Farms and In the Weeds by B.K. Borison. I discovered this series of books. Um, actually, I listened to the third book. It's called uh, Mixed Signals by B.K. Borison. And I fell in love, not only with the characters, but with the town that this book series is in and so I picked up the first two because in like romance series you know how you can like read one out of it if you really wanted to because like they, they don't like coincide they might like spoilers the couples in these books end up together but that's not really a spoiler when it comes to romance so I'm not too mad about it this one is a fake dating this one is a sunshine grumpy this is like romantic small town America they work on a Christmas tree farm and they're all so precious. The characters are all so precious and I already know that. So I'm super excited to get into these. I want the third one, the third in paperback. I'm just waiting for it to be a little bit cheaper so that they can like, look pretty on my shelf because I'm absolutely in love with this town. I want to live here. It was a perfect escape. Audiobook, like the audiobook was great. It was a perfect escape. I want to live there. I'm going to be there. And the next one, the other two that I picked up are Olivia Blake. Oli Ol I'm sorry. Olive? Ol Olivia? Ol Olive? I always say Olivia Blake, Blake, but that's an E. That's not an A. Um, the first one is Alone With You in the Ether. This is her love story. Uh, apparently it's like two scientists messing around with time and they fall in love. But from my understanding, it's more of like a normal people Sally Rooney vibe where it's like two people who don't really... Who are, it's like almost like bad timing, which is funny for like a time traveling sort of science fiction book. But it's like they can't seem to get together if that makes sense like they don't vibe with each other very well but it's like it's like a realistic love story um so I'm curious I'm curious about this one I also just really loved this cover and I am reading Atlas 6 right now I'm reading the Atlas 6 right now so so far I like it so I'm intrigued well hopefully I like it because <laughs> I picked up all of her books um, the other one is one for my enemy and this one was definitely I'm not gonna lie to you this was a cover buys because like look how beautiful these two look together and then like look how beautiful this one is in itself like I want this tattooed on my body the white isn't really picking up on my camera but like yes okay and it's white underneath and look at the inside cover so basically this was a cover buy and I'm not mad about it um, I have no idea what this is I believe this is another like I think this is like mafia dark fantasy vibe in modern day manhattan where we lay our scene two rival witch families fight to maintain control of the respective criminal empires like i'm so glad i picked it up for the cover because that sounds really intriguing and interesting and i am here for it okay the next ones are 
part of a series and new classics I'm gonna add to my shelf. The next book I picked up was Is Beautiful Nightmares by KJ Sutton. Um, also FYI, before I get into it, these have now been traditionally published. Uh, KJ Sutton, I think she signed a contract with Penguin. Um, so I had to quickly pick up the paperback because the other ones are all in paperback and I have a feeling that they are going to redo all the covers and the fifth book in the series is not going to fit with the others but at least I have the first four <laughs> in the right format. Uh, that's why I picked it up because it's going to be a while before I get to this book. But this is the fourth book in the Fortuna Sworn series. It is about uh, Fortuna who is a nightmare creature. She uh, she can go into your brain and pull out your worst nightmares and make you believe that they're there. She can like manipulate your mind. Um, and she, in order to save her brother from the fairy realm, marries a fairy prince. And everything just like blows up from there. <laughs> it's not like a, it blows up. Everything goes absolutely insane haywire and I absolutely loved it. Um, congrats to the author because I, I follow the author on Instagram and she's a love, seems like a lovely human being. So I'm happy to support her indie covers before we get switched on to traditional publishing. Super happy for her though. Um, the next one is The Bone Shard Emperor by Andrea Stewart. I just recently read The Bone Shard daughter and loved it. Basically it is about a girl who whose father is a bit of a tyrant king. Um, he knows a particular magic that r involves bones and bone shards, hence the bone shard emperor. <laughs> um, and she is sort of his apprentice. She is learning how to use this magic and what and like kind of coming to herself and learning what she might want to do with that. And it also involves like this rogue pirate character, um, some cute little furry animal characters. And it was a great ride the first one was, so I'm excited to continue on with the second one. All right. Next one was a blind pick. It's Fury Born by Claire Claire Legrand. This is another one that I have not hopped on yet. Um, this is very much. I've never heard anyone say anything bad about this. I've only seen people rave about this, but I feel like it's one of those underrated reads that we don't see a lot of on like social media. Uh, one of my best friends recommended the series, and I trust her taste wholly and completely. Um, so far she has not let me down. So I went ahead and picked up the first one. I was so tempted to just pick up the whole series because they're beautiful first off. And like, like I said, I trust, I trust her with my, with her book taste. Like we're good. Right? So, um, Fury Born by Claire Le Legends is from a tr trilogy. I have no idea what it's about, but if I know anything about my friend, it's probably going to be some badass female characters, fantasy, romance, quests, um, awesome, crazy powers, and badass characters. So I'm here for it. <laughs> if you know anything about the book, please tell me down below. No spoilers, please, but like maybe you can give me the better synopsis because I, I feel like I am late to this train. This uh, I've seen this everywhere as far as like bookstores. Um, and it is a completed trilogy. I just have never, I haven't gotten to it because other books that I'm gonna unhaul here in a little while. And the next two are classics that I picked up and that is Madame Bovary and Moby Dick. Moby Dick I plan on doing a buddy read here soon with one of my best book friends. Um, it's Moby Dick. I don't know what to tell you about Moby Dick. Um, it's about a crazy old white guy who gets obsessed with killing a whale and it's a whole metaphor for something else. I'll find out when I read it. I have not yet read Moby Dick. Now Madame Bovary is like the mini version of Anna Karenina, which is basically a woman is in an unhappy relationship and she um, cheats and is kind of like the consequences of society and how they, they, you know, are kind of at this point in time a little heavier on women than they are on men. So we're going to, we're going to jump into that uh, commentary again. I'm currently reading Tessa of of the Dobervilles, which is basically the same thing, but it's like rural um, English country where a young maiden has a baby outside of wedlock and then she tries to get into another marriage and is casted out by society because of her previous, her previous baby. I have a feeling it's gonna be really sad and depressing, but all right, now let's get into the unhauling books. Basically, I have to make room for these books because, good lord, <laughs> I have a lot of books on my TBR. I feel like I need to do another TBR update here soon. I'm thinking maybe doing it with my mid-year wrap-up because I think that would be like, good. First book I have read, 
I'm getting rid of Gallant by V.E. Schwab. I have a younger niece who I think will enjoy this book more than myself. So it's probably going to go to her. I didn't really care for this book as much. Um, I think I'm just kind of in this phase of life where, middle, where um, YA and middle grade just isn't hitting as much. Um, I'm definitely in like my epic <laughs> adult fantasy and romanticy um, era. And this one just isn't vibing with it, so I'm going to move it off of my shelf and give it to someone who will appreciate it more. And also introduce my girl to some more V.E. Schwab. I sent her City of Ghosts a, a long time ago, so we got to reintroduce V.E. Schwab, okay? I'm going to like slowly build her up into the love of V.E. Schwab. Um, I have The Magicians by Lee Grossman. I am not going to read this. There's no reason why not. I just have so many other books that I want to read more than this, so it has just sat on my TBR cart. And that is probably going to be the case for a lot of these books. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, and it's just time for it to move on. I feel bad because I was really interested in reading it, but because the, the Netflix has an adaption of this book series, and I like it a lot. And it's very like dark magic, dark academia vibes. But it's time for it to go. I'll just I'll just watch the adaption if I feel like it. The next one I have read. That is A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lin. I listened to the audiobook, which might be why I did not like this book as much, but this was like on sale on Amazon. I absolutely loved the cover. I picked it up. I heard some fairly good things about it, but it, I didn't I didn't vibe with it. There was a lot of issues for me with plot holes and just like common sense decision making was not there. I don't know if it's because the characters, I think it's supposed to be a YA. I don't know if those characters were younger and they're supposed to make those naive weird decisions but I didn't vibe with this book so it is going to go it looks so beautiful so hopefully it'll go to somebody who's it will it will have a place of love on their bookshelf uh the next one this is ugh, it's gonna kill me I know um The Last Wish by Andrea Skibowski Sapkowski um it's gonna go because I well, I'm not gonna get to this I'm not gonna get to this uh I will just watch the adoptions <laughs> on Netflix. I'm so bad, I know. But I, when that, when that show first came out on Netflix, The Witcher, I quickly became obsessed and had my husband purchase every single video game and I picked up this book. And then I never read this book and I've only played a few seconds of one of the video games. It's a red flag. Like, that's, that's my red flag trait right there, okay? <laughs> but anyways... I'm gonna let this go on to somebody else. The next book, The Name of Things by Jen Leons. I read The Ruin of Kings. It was okay. Not my favorite fantasy. Um, but these are chunky books and there are eight books in the series and lord I've got bigger I got bigger books <laughs> to read that are higher on my priority list. This has already sit on my TBR for three years. I'm not gonna get to it and I know that so I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go. All right. I've got so many other like I started this I started this series yeah I started this series started this series started this series and then I bought oh, where are they all these up here okay so I'm set for epic fantasy adult fantasy for a while okay I've got so many like 800 page fantasy books I need to read that is not going to be one of them sadly the next one is Ruthless Gods by Emily A. Duncan I bought into the hype with the first book The Wicked Saints this is the second in a series um, it was okay. The first one was okay. I was going to continue on with the series, but then Emily A. Duncan went through a whole thing. I'll let you look it up. It's like a whole drama about, not drama, but like, she's one of those authors that commented on somebody reviewing her book and also was in part of kind of a, a uh, you know, I, I'll just let you look it up because more, more people have more commentary that is more that is more well versed than me um but basically i'm gonna let this one go i'm not gonna get to it the first one was okay um but i wasn't really bought into it i do love these covers and i hope that we like continue with this trend of like i want to display this also the titles to these books were amazing i honestly think that's what made me pick it up and want to read it was just like the the titles and like the cover pages and it is time for it to go it's time for it to go all right the next three i might lump together and that is um, The Wiz Mob and the Grenadine Kid, Egg and Spoon, and A Light Too Bright. A Light Too Bright is by Samuel Miller. Um, Egg and Spoon is by Gregory Maguire. And The Wiz Mob and the Gren Grenadine Kid is by Colin Malloy. There's nothing wrong with these books. They are all just middle grade books that I don't think I'm ever going to get to. Honestly, 
I'm going to tell you why I bought these books. Um, cover buys. They are that beautiful canvas feeling books. They have, well two of them have those beautiful envelope pages that I absolutely love and I want every book to have. And um, yeah, they're just really pretty and they have really cool names to the titles and I was going through like a middle grade era, but it's time for me to move on from the middle grade era and relinquish these to other people to read. There's nothing wrong with these books as far as I know. I just never got to them. This one has been on a TBR like three times. This book has been on a TBR twice. And this book I have not even thought of picking up. So we're moving on. These are going to go to my niece. So fair warning. These are going to go to my niece. These ones are going to end up, on, end up on my Pingo bookshop. So the link is down below if you want to buy these books. Like I said, I wrap them up. I make them look pretty. You might get a little treat and some bookmarks with it. Um, actually, you will. You will get a treat and some bookmarks with it if you picture them from my shop. But they will be there for anyone who wants them. Um... I would be happy to hand them over. But that's it. That is all. I think that took a lot longer than it should have. I'm I'm rusty. But anyways, make sure you subscribe, like my video, comment down below on some of the books that you've recently got, um, any book recommendations you have for me to add to my haul, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.